Hi, and welcome to our channel, our very first live stream. I'm super excited for this today. I hope that a lot of you have been able to make it. Um, I'm thinking it'll probably take a few minutes for people to trickle in, but I'm basically just gonna get going with this anyway. But let me know if you're here and if you're doing this with me or if you are just watching in the chat, I'd be interested to know. And if I do happen to go too fast for you to keep up, any of you who are making it with me, just let me know also in the chat and I will try to do my best to keep my eye on that so I will slow down. And yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited for these. We actually did a trial run yesterday just because I was nervous about our first live stream and they turned out amazingly. So I'm really excited. And without further ado, let's jump into this. So to start with, um, obviously we're making these gluten-free and my mom really r likes this certain brand of gluten-free flour that I hadn't tried before. And I figured we would give it a go for this because it is a lot less dense than our homemade gluten-free all-purpose flour. Which figures, because my homemade all-purpose flour, I like to focus on getting as many whole grains in there as possible. So I'm using really heavy brown rice flour and oat flour, again made from whole oats, and just trying to pack in as many nutrients and nutrient-dense flours in there as possible, which is a great rule of thumb for things like breads, which I'm more used to, but for things like pastries, we're wanting to have the lightest flour possible so that we can actually give it a chance to have that fluff and that texture that you'd want in a pastry. So I'm going to be using the Great Value all-purpose gluten-free flour, and you'll just add a cup of that to a small mixing bowl, or if you're like me, a medium-sized mixing bowl, because I have a tendency to spill over when I'm mixing, and yeah. <laughs> And I'm basically going to be <laughs> giving away all of my secret ingredients here at the beginning because essentially we're combining most of our ingredients here in the beginning anyway. So after you've added that to the bowl, um, you can just add a fourth teaspoon salt, which I like to eyeball. <laughs> and I'm going to be adding a generous half tablespoon of baking powder. Now I want to do this because I think in order to get that fluffiness and that flakiness that I'm shooting for in these gluten-free pastries, we need to add some sort of a leavening agent. And the reason why I don't want to use baking soda is because one, I would have to add an acid in order for it to actually react and cause that leavening to happen, but baking powder already has the acid in with the baking soda, and they're otherwise pretty much identical. So I'm going to stir this here. And the other reason is because baking powder is actually what they call a double acting leavening agent, which essentially means that it leavens twice. So when this dough gets wet, it's going to leaven a little bit, and also when it's heated, it's going to leaven a little bit. And it's especially that second reaction that I'm hoping we can <laughs> capitalize on here to get our flaky pastry dough. So when that's mixed up, we are ready to cut in a fourth of our butter. Well, Sorry, not a fourth of our butter, half of our butter, but a fourth cup of our butter. Oops. I didn't cut that super well, <laughs> so it's less than half of the stick, but it won't make that big of a difference but I'm going to be doing the bigger half, <laughs> so to speak, in the next portion of our butter because 
I think that ends up contributing more to the layering effect and that flakiness that we're going for. But I'll explain that more later. So here we're just going to take um, our pastry cutter and cut our butter into the flour. If you're not familiar with pastry making, this is pretty common, but it can be a little weird if you've never done it before. I think it's kind of fun. But basically, we're just trying to cut up our butter, in this case, dairy-free butter, and um, basically until it's about the size of like a pea, and we're trying to coat it in all of the flour. So we've also got Preston here and he's watching the chat. So if any of you guys have questions, comments or concerns as we're going through this, please just let us know. He will notify me if I haven't noticed it on my own screen here. Scrape off some of the butter that's climbed up onto our pastry cutter. That way we can make sure all of it is getting incorporated. When it comes to baking for alternative diets, I am a bit of a nut about trying to make sure that absolutely everything is not wasted. Because as many of you guys have probably already experienced, Ingredients for alternative diets just tend to be a lot more expensive and yeah, either way, I just really like to not waste anything that I'm using. Sounds good. Um, yes, Alita, there is a recipe um, that's in the description for this video. So if you're following along, sorry, I should have mentioned that again before, but it's just in the description. That's the original recipe that I'm going off of. Um, but as I said, it's also completely modified. So what I'm doing may not be what you see, but yes, that's where you can find the recipe. Okay, and now we need ice water, just about a fourth a cup, but we're going to be adding it super slowly so that we don't oversaturate our dough mixture with water, because that will really prevent the leavening action that we're hoping to happen happen. So I'm gonna get that fourth cup of water. Or approximately a fourth cup <laughs> we'll see here yeah so if you have questions like about this recipe <laughs> feel free to ask as we go along but we'll also have a bit of downtime while this is baking and I was going to essentially have a Q&A session then so that if you have other questions related to your specific dietary needs we can we can talk about it then. Yeah, so we're just going to be slowly adding this cold ice water. And as you can see, hopefully, um, the dough is starting to clump up into little balls. And 
that is a great sign, but we're not quite there yet. Actually, I'm going to need quite a bit more water. Now I was able to get some ice in advance, but if you're like us and you don't actually have an ice maker, you can always just use refrigerated water or stick some water in the freezer a little bit in advance, just so that it's nice and cold, because that will help make sure that your butter, or in this case, alternative butter, which has an even lower melting point, it won't make it melt, because we're wanting to keep it as solid as possible. So at the very least, just don't use warm water. And I'd even say like avoid room temperature water. And they, yet again, need more water. <laughs> Trying to be pretty conservative here because I know yesterday I did slightly overdo it on pouring the water in because it can happen so fast where one moment it looks like this and you're great <laughs> and definitely not at risk of having too much water and then the next moment you can have a really watery dough ball, which we're trying to avoid that, but we'll see. Like I said, they ended up turning out yesterday, so even if that does happen, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, this, this part can definitely be a little slow, especially if you're not uh, doing the recipe with me. So if you do have questions, feel free to leave them in the chat and I will be able to see them and talk to you as I'm doing this. There we go. And this is the dough ball that we're looking for. So we can shift gears a little bit and put some flour down onto our rolling surface. And I'm actually going to shift here to using some of our own homemade all-purpose gluten-free flour. And if that's something that you're interested in, I know we already have that up on our channel. So you can look into our gluten-free sourdough recipe and it's actually on there. The great thing about making your own too is you can always modify how much xanthan gum you're putting in so that you can have the dough structure that you're looking for. And here we'll just get our dough out onto that floured surface. It's great. And if you, I don't know how clearly you'll be able to see our dough, but if yours has chunks of butter in it and it looks kind of disconcerting because you're not used to pastries, or you know, this is the first time you've made turnovers, I don't expect that many of us make turnovers that frequently, but if you do have chunks of butter, that is perfectly normal and what we're going for, so don't don't feel like that's bad or weird. Okay, and then we're just gonna roll out our dough. As you can see here, my dough is pretty wet again. Um, this is essentially what it was like yesterday, but 
it's not the end of the world. Just make sure that your rolling pin has plenty of flour on it and we'll be good to go. And here we're basically going for the dimensions of like 12 by 6 inches, roughly. Definitely doesn't need to be exact. But I'm going to say that's about right. And now it's time for our other half of butter. You'll take the next half. And essentially you're just slicing it this time and then spreading it onto the dough mixture, but just two thirds of the dough mixture. And when I say spreading, I don't mean like try to get the butter into the dough really well. Uh, if it's just like let it rest on the surface and that is perfectly fine. So like I said before, I consider this part slightly more important than the first, cutting the butter in. And this is because, I don't know if it's just me or if you guys will feel the same way, but whenever I have a pastry like, and the flakes happen in layers, it just feels more like a pastry. And that happens because of this process where you're spreading the butter out onto your dough and then we'll end up folding it and rolling it out and that just makes the butter in nice fine layers into your dough and then when your dough is baking some of that butter will evaporate and form those air pockets that create that flaky fluffy texture that we're going for So this is quite a crucial step in our <laughs> flaky challenge for this. I just broke our dough a little bit. Yeah, so try not to do what I just did where I was trying too hard to like flatten the butter. If it's not flat, it's really not that big of a deal. Like I said, we're gonna be rolling it out anyway. So I don't know why I tried to do that. I was on autopilot, but it, yeah. <laughs> you don't wanna break it into your dough. Nice. And I'm going to say that's about two thirds. Actually, I think I'm a little short. I'm going to do a little bit more here. <laughs> yes, if any of you are doing this with me and it's super new, so you may need more time, uh, just let me know in the chat so I can slow down a little bit. But here, we're just going to fold over the third of dough that wasn't buttered and then we'll fold over the part that yeah like that <laughs> perfect and now mine is actually sticking quite a bit to our counter space so i'm just going to carefully try to <laughs> unstick it
I should have mentioned, if you guys have pastry cloths, this is a great time to be using it. I just don't have one. So, yeah, I just use flour on our island instead, which tends to work, but as you can see, it does also have its flaws, so. There, I'll just put a little more flour down this time and hopefully we'll be good. I'm just going to roll it out again and we're going to repeat that same process. <laughs> Surprised I hadn't hiccuped yet. <laughs> And like I said, <laughs> same process. So we're just going to be slicing the butter again onto two thirds of our dough. So exciting. Like honestly, this isn't the most riveting thing to do when you're baking. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but it is really cool to me how it works and when it's baking, just like how it actually adds to a flaky puff pastry. So definitely worth the effort. But it is also kind of weird if you haven't done it before. Or if you don't understand why you're doing it then it can just feel tedious but I explained it to you guys so you're already a leg up on other people <laughs> no this is not my rolling pin either <laughs> yeah I know it's really sad I'm a food science student but I don't have like a lot of random kitchen items and I forget that I don't have them because I'm rarely make the same thing twice at like a frequent enough pace for me to remember that I don't have said thing. So this is totally my neighbor's rolling pin and my neighbor's pastry cutter <laughs> and my neighbor's ice. <laughs> but that isn't like a kitchen item like the other ones so I feel less bad it's just our freezers lack of an ice maker but yeah <laughs> I find it funny too because like I really like cinnamon rolls and making cinnamon rolls and that's mostly when Preston and I realized, oh yeah, we still don't have a rolling pin. <laughs> but at that point, when I've determined that I want to make something, I'm so far set in like the actual making it that I, I, I have to borrow at that point because like, <laughs> otherwise your dough is going to rise too much and you know, you're going to have problems with your actual recipe that you started. So here, I only covered about half of our dough this time. That is totally fine if you're in the same boat. Essentially, we're just going to fold it again. And I'm actually going to fold it into quarters like this. And then I'm going to stick it into the same bowl we were just mixing it in and stick it in the fridge for 20 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess you heard that. So. Something definitely fell in our fridge when I put that in there. Well, when I closed the door, so. <laughs> Oops. 
<laughs> yes, that is my own butter knife. <laughs> I, okay, I do actually have a lot of my own things. I felt like I was set basically when Preston and I got married and Preston had pretty much nothing, <laughs> but it, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nope, I definitely don't have my own rolling pin. Yeah. <laughs> But I do also have random weird kitchen items, like I've got an ice cream maker. Okay, <laughs> which makes a whole lot of sense as someone who's dairy free, but <sighs> yeah. And these are my own measuring cups and um, I'm not completely, <laughs> yeah, not completely at a loss for my own things, but. Okay, I'm just going to be leaving this here because we are going to be rolling it out again. So we will need our flour still and everything. So if you're one of those people who likes to clean up as you go, <laughs> try to refrain right now because we're going to be shifting gears over to the stove now for our filling, but we will be coming back to this. Okay. Just let me know if I'm good. I hope you guys can see me. <laughs> um, I'm actually using blueberries that have been frozen, so I won't be needing to add any sort of water to this. If you're using fresh fruit, you'll probably want to add about a quarter cup of water to a cup of your berries or whatever fruit that you're using. I guess you could be making like apple turnovers or something. So that's totally up to you as far as how you're doing this. I find that the less liquid you add, um, because liquid seeps from the fruit as well, the less liquid you add, the less liquid you'll end up having spilling over in your turnovers, which I prefer because then you don't have, A, you have less of a mess when you're done making the turnovers, but also it's like, I don't know, I like biting into a turnover that has like whole pieces of fruit in it more than like a liquidy mess so to speak so i'm going to not actually add any extra water here but that's up to you i also need my throat <laughs> so okay and then with this so to start with i'm just putting a half cup of the berries in a small saucepan and then I'm going to be bat not bashing them <laughs> mashing them with the back of my spoon and letting that essentially simmer for a little bit so I'll bring it up to a boil and then let it simmer for about two minutes and I'll keep it on a low heat while I and mashing them. That was a bit of a mess, but I wanted to add some of the liquid from when they thawed into here because it does just need a little more liquid. But honestly, not all that much at this point. So if you just have like the bottom of your pan that has liquid, that's totally fine. So yeah. probably 
would be good to show them the consistency because okay. like the camera can't see it right now. That's fair. I don't know where to put it where the camera will see it. It's where the bowl is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just <laughs> just for reference, that's what my bowl looks like right now. So again, not that much liquid. And I haven't like completely mashed the blueberries so that they're just complete mush, but yeah. <laughs> If you guys are making different kinds of turnovers, go ahead and let me know what you're making. I'd be interested in knowing, especially since at this point it's kind of a bit of a waiting game. And I've only made strawberry turnovers up till now, so <laughs> this will be a bit of a new experience for me. You guys are too sweet. I really do have a lot of kitchen things I feel like I need to say, <laughs> but I tend to like making things that I don't have all the equipment I need for. And I don't know why it is that I end up doing that, but <laughs> I really do have a lot of random things that most people don't even have because it doesn't really make sense. starting to look pretty good. <laughs> More liquid is seeping out of the blueberries, which is what we're looking for here. Basically, we're essentially making a like berry syrup for the rest of our filling to be incorporated into. So don't worry, like I said before, we will be incorporating whole berries that you should be able to experience in the turnover. It's not all going to be this liquidy. And ours just starts boiling super fast. When it does start boiling, just make sure that you're stirring constantly so that you don't get anything sticking to the bottom of your pan or burning. And then, now we're ready to add our sugar. I'm just going to be adding about 3 eighths cup, which 
If you're using a fourth cup measure, that's just a fourth cup and then a half of that again. And then you can stir that in. And then I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. And again, you can go ahead and stir that in. And if you still have clumps of cornstarch at this point, that's totally fine. We're actually going to be bringing it to a boil again and stirring constantly, so it'll have plenty of time to break up. Then we're just going to add about a half tablespoon of lemon juice, which I'm just going to squeeze in directly. And then just a pinch of salt. And then the mixture, mixture is ready to be brought to a boil again and we're just going to do the exact same thing where we bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about two minutes. And with this one, you'll want to be stirring it constantly. And in case you're like me and you ask yourself why every step of a recipe, essentially the first step is so that we can get more liquid seeping from the berries. And then this step, um, which is necessary to incorporate these ingredients that we just added, aside from the lemon juice. But adding the cornstarch then requires another heat treatment in order for the cornstarch to actually act as a thickener for our filling. So again, it started boiling super fast, so be wary of it if your stove is like ours. Yeah, again, just stir constantly here. That way you don't risk burning and getting anything stuck to the bottom of your saucepan. Once that approximate two minutes is up, you can go ahead and take it off the heat and add your remaining cups of berries. So I'm going to be adding, I think, two cups. Yeah, two cups of blueberries to this like syrupy mixture. 
and then we'll just be leaving it on the stove to cool while we work with our dough again. Beautiful. Honestly, that looks so delicious. It makes me want to eat something like waffles and just like put it on there. <laughs> okay. So now it is time. I didn't have my eye on the timer when we were done with the dough, but I believe we're good to go. So we can get our dough back out from the fridge. And this time you'll want to make sure that you have some sort of egg wash. So if you have any sort of egg allergy that you're working around, things that you can use instead would be like aquafaba or even maple syrup or honey, um, which you won't necessarily have to use the same exact way we're going to use our egg wash here because it won't add all of the same properties as the egg itself where it gets that like shiny browning effect on the outside of the turnovers. But the main goal there with the egg wash is really to seal the turnovers. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have that shining browning effect as well. Though if that is what you're going for, you can add some sort of protein like milk and just like wash the outside with milk to have it brown because yeah it's a mylard browning reaction <laughs> in case you guys were wondering <laughs> yeah i'm just going to put a little more flour down and then grab my dough So I think the only thing that had fallen in the fridge was another stick of butter, so we're fine. <laughs> this is also a good point to get out a pan for your turnovers. Um, as you can see here, I've got just a pan with a silicone lining and my basting brush for the egg wash. The basting brush is another one of those things where I feel like it doesn't really make sense for me to have, especially since I don't have like a rolling pin of my own. But that's beside the point. I just find it a little funny, especially since we had a bit of a dialogue going there about what I don't have. Okay, so here, in case you were worried about how we didn't roll out our butter before, now is the time that we're going to do that. So I'm just gonna give our rolling pin a little more flour and then we can roll out our dough. Then at this point, it's best to get it as close to a square as possible. And then we'll just be cutting the edges so that, well, trimming the edges really, so that we have a slightly better square.
Back to the fact that I don't like... Oh, sorry. Wait. <laughs> no, I do have a basting brush. I just said I find it a little funny that of all the things that I don't have, I happen to have a basting brush, which just seems a little random. But, hey, it comes in handy. <laughs> Yeah, so all of these scraps I'm just collecting into their own pile. That way we can roll it out again because more turnovers. So here, as you can see, my square is definitely not perfect, but I'm actually going to fix that in the next step. So, Depending on the size that you're wanting to go for, you can cut, say, this into additional squares and then fold those squares into triangles for your turnovers. That's perfectly, perfectly fine. And that's what I normally do, actually. But I'm wanting to leave this a bit thicker so that we can keep as many layers as possible. So I'm actually just going to cut this square across into two triangles because I felt like my squares personally were just too small and I'm not planning on making mini turnovers here. So basically, let's see, this is about a half centimeter thick, which you guys are welcome to do this however you want, but for reference, that's about the size that mine is right now. So folding this over loosely, without like pinching it or anything, I'm just going to cut along the edge again so that we've got a nice good triangle. And then I'm just going to stick that as is onto our pan and do the same thing with this other one. Which actually looks great as it is, so I'm just going to stick it over on the pan with the other one. And then just get more flour down in the middle. Now we can do the rest of our dough. Do you know why they can't see you any comments with their own? That's a great question. I have no idea. Can they see both Marin and Alita's comments? That's a good question. Alita and Marin have so far been the only ones commenting, so if you can see each other's comments, then you can actually see everyone's. <laughs> I'm gonna try to go for like the mini turnover look here. So I'm actually going to intentionally cut a pretty so small square here, just cause I think it's gonna be cute. <laughs> like how adorable is that? That is so tiny and cute. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> then hopefully we can kind of achieve the same thing with here. Unfortunately, it get it is getting quite flowery. That is really weird. I assumed that everyone would be able to see everyone's comments. So I promise we don't have that feature like disabled or anything. 
And this is just going to be like a little dome turnover. At least that's what I'm going for. Okay. At this point, I'm just going to get all this flour and dough off my hands. And then we're good to bring our filling over here and start on our egg washing process. And I'm just going to bring this front and center so you guys can see what I'm doing again. I think I'm going to flip this guy over. Actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I'm still going to do it. Just because I'm hoping that if I have the thickest part on top, we'll be able to get most of our leveling action. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to preheat the oven now so that we don't have to wait too long. But I'll tell you also why I've waited this long. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have mentioned we have to preheat to 450. So it is going to take at least our oven a little while. But I intentionally waited that way we could stick our turnovers in before it actually comes to full temperature because I'm hoping that by doing that we will be able to get more of our leavening action going and that's what this challenge is all about right trying to get as much of that flaky layering going so hopefully that will work for us it seemed to yesterday so I have high hopes Yeah, if you haven't done an egg wash before, we're essentially just painting the egg onto the turnover. And right now I'm doing the inside surface. And then as soon as that whole surface is done, you can stick your filling into the middle. Which Don't want to overdo it and get some spill over, but I also really like to have as much filling in there as possible. And then we just fold this over. And then we grab a fork and you can just pinch down those sides. We've got some spillover right there, but I think it's worth having the extra filling. And then as soon as that's done, you can just take your basting brush again and brush the outside, which is getting a lot of the extra flour off, which I think is a good thing because who wants to bite into extra flour? I don't know, maybe some people do. So to answer Marin's question from earlier about the comments, um, I switched over to my account and pulled up the stream and uh, I could see all of their comments on mine. So I have no idea what's going on. Weird. Oh no. Well, that's not supposed to happen. If you guys were able to see that, the dough just completely split where I had turned the triangle over. This should hopefully remedy that because the egg, after all, is a binding agent. 
So we can <laughs> try to capitalize on that here and especially put some in that seam so that it kind of keeps it together. I guess I also didn't explain how to make an egg wash. I had already done this previously. Um, and this might, yeah. Oh, essentially you can just take an egg and beat it. And that's really all you need to do to have your very own egg wash. It's, yeah, nothing too crazy. Get more whole berries. I'm a huge fan of berries, really of any kind. So that's probably my biggest fault when it comes to turnovers is I just really want to stick as many berries into the middle as possible. But I know it is really less aesthetically pleasing when you've got spillover. Yeah, so even if you're not gluten-free or dairy-free and you're just watching, this is definitely a recipe that I recommend trying because it's so good. So even if you do use the original with wheat flour or butter, like it's totally fine and will still work for you. Awesome. Now these definitely have more flour on them just because they were on that floured surface for longer. I'm going to try to do both of these at the same time. We're going to have a pretty pathetic amount of berries on the inside of these, but I still think they're really cute. <laughs> Speaking of food being cute though, do you guys feel like that's something that's important for food? Is it something that should be cute or does it just need to be food? I'm curious as to what your opinions are. Get back in there. Okay, there we go. Oh no. 
it split. So if it does split like that, oh, I totally did put too many berries in there. I didn't think that was possible because I didn't want it to be possible. <laughs> okay. Well, this one's going to turn out definitely less prettily, which is sad because it was going to be adorable. But that's my bad for trying to stuff too many blueberries in there. And before the same thing happens with this one, I'm going to go ahead and remove at least one. And hopefully that's all I'll need to. Of course, I have blueberry fingers now, so I also made that one look less <laughs> great by pinching it. But oh well, it's the big ones that I'm caring about right now. And now we're good to pop these in the oven. We're at 375-ish right now, so hopefully we can get some of our... Oh, I didn't do the egg wash. Hopefully we can get some of our leavening action going really soon here and right off the bat. I almost wish our oven went slower. It's fairly fast. And this is the longer waiting period because really we just need them to bake at this point. So yes, cute food does taste better. Okay, thank you. I think a lot of food like is an experience and it comes down to like also enjoying it. Like you eat it with your eyes before you actually eat it. So I do think it's important that food looks good. I am unfortunately not actually that great at making food look good. <laughs> As you'll probably see with these, like they probably won't look like the best turnovers you've ever seen, but especially because I try to overstuff them with blueberries, but you know, I do think it is better when cute, when food is cute. Hi, Nathaniel. Oh, sweet. Yeah, sorry, Marin and Alfleda. That just means that your computers are probably being wonky for whatever reason. <laughs> I agree. Yummy food is wonderful, but I do think, like, Yummy food in and of itself, of course, is its own virtue, but I do think it just makes it a little bit better when it's also really aesthetically pleasing. You need to set a timer. Yeah, I'm going to set the timer now. I wanted to set it for when it actually reached 450, and I'm just going to do that now per probably 17 to 16 minutes. I went with 17. I gave myself that buffer because our oven is sometimes weird and just like, it takes a really long time to actually get to the number you want it to because it has a tendency to skip really far and then you have to like go back and forth. So sometimes it takes me the whole minute just to get to the number that I actually want. <sighs> oven problems. <laughs> but at this point, you guys are all free to start cleaning up your mess if you were making your turnovers along with me and of course 
this is the start of our Q&A. So if you have questions uh, just for me or about baking or alternative diet planning, like anything, come at me. <laughs> Oh, weird. Well, I'm glad that fixed it for you, Marin. Olivia Jackson said, this is a random, not important question, but have you ever considered just calling your live streams alternate live? Oh my goodness. I love that so much. And if it's all right with you, I will totally start doing that. <laughs> Cause that, oh my gosh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's beautiful. And I, I, yeah, it doesn't matter if your questions are important or not, honestly, like, you can ask me anything. Alita Jensen says, I can see everyone but Marin. That is so weird. I don't know what's happening with the two of you, but. <laughs> yeah. Alita Jensen also asks, um, so what would you suggest about making this sugar free too? That is a great question. So that depends on if you're wanting like, honestly, this recipe doesn't take much sugar. Like, it just had some in the filling, which personally, I feel like isn't 100% necessary anyway, because it's already fruit, which is naturally sweet because of the fructose. If that, like, if you want to just use no sugar in there, like, I don't see a problem with that. But I'd also recommend something like monk fruit if you're wanting a no-calorie sweetener to replace with sugar or erythritol that also works but I don't know how you feel about those sugar alternatives but that is something that you can use you can also definitely replace it with honey or maple syrup if that's something that you're looking for Nathaniel Jackson, I feel like sugar-free turnovers just sound disappointing. <laughs> well, yeah, you're all entitled to your opinions, I guess. And like, I mean, it is a dessert, so live up if you can. But honestly, all the more power to you if you're taking sugar out of your diet or if you're going on like a sugar, if you're trying to, like sugar addiction, I feel like is a very real thing. And I have definitely been prone to my kicks of needing sugar to an unhealthy degree. And if that's you and you're trying to kick it, then like all the more power to you. And you can definitely just replace your sugar with something else until, until you get over that. <laughs> or never if you don't want to. <laughs> Um, Nathaniel Jackson, is this supposed to be a staring contest where I'm staring at the computer and you're staring at the computer? Or should I stare into the camera? <laughs> yeah, sorry about the video. I think our camera died. So Preston is on replacing that right now. Alita Jensen, Nathaniel, I will be sure to serve sugar-free turnovers the next time you come. And 
honestly, I'm 100% certain he will enjoy them. So it's his own bias that's getting in his way. What? I don't know what happened here, but this doesn't actually work with the HDMI cord. It just shows the other videos okay. and photos that are on it. Well, we shouldn't really need it. Is that one on me now? Yeah. Sorry for the video technical difficulties. <laughs> the camera we were rolling on before just died, and we tried using like we had a backup camera just in case that happened where we thought the same HDMI cord would work. So we were just gonna like swap them out real fast. That however didn't work. So sorry, you guys <laughs> don't know what happened there, but hopefully you guys are back to seeing me like normal. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, Nathaniel Jackson. <laughs> How do they sound disappointing and delicious? I feel like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh. Yeah, also let me know if you're liking this live stream format or if you prefer us just to upload recipe videos that we've already filmed in advance because it's definitely a different format for us too and requires a lot of different, well, just like planning <laughs> in general and just different equipment setup and everything. So I'm interested in hearing what you prefer. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Olivia Jackson. I'm glad that it's working now. Yeah, and just so you guys know, we actually do also have our next live stream scheduled, which will be a chocolate caramel thumbprint cookie. I'm super excited about these. I'm planning on making them just vegan at this point. If you have other alternatives that you're wanting me to incorporate, just let me know. But at this point, I'm just gonna go with the vegan if no one has anything else that they're just dying that I also incorporate into them. It'll be my first time making them, so we'll see how it goes. And because there's also caramel, it'll, be, I feel like challenging enough probably to make them vegan, but we'll see. It'll be my first time, so. <laughs> uh, you guys are great. <laughs> I'm loving the chat. Okay, that's fair. Thank you, Nathaniel Jackson. Yeah, I feel like probably the same thing for me, honestly, because if I had the time and it was someone I wanted to bake or cook with, I feel like the live stream is fun in that way where it's a little more interactive, but it is also just more convenient to have recipe videos on hand that you can just whip up when you're actually ready to make said thing. That is a great, wait, I think I might've skipped things. Fair enough. Uh, Marin Jensen, 
semi-frequent. They won't be as frequent as our normal videos, but we are planning on doing them every other week. Um, well, not even quite. Basically, every second and fourth Sunday is what we're planning on for our live streams. So, yeah, months that have more Sundays will just drop that extra Sunday. So it'll be roughly every other week. And I'm hoping that will be sustainable because <laughs> we'll see. But it also depends on just like how many people come, if it's something that attracts a lot of attention and desire and interest from people who are trying to learn how to bake in an alternative way. But we'll see. My plan right now is to commit to doing it for the next three months. And then we can assess from there whether it's worth continuing at that pace or what changes we need to make. Okay, thank you, Alita. <laughs> and Marin. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we've got about five minutes left on our timer. And like it's it's not actually the best to add the icing when your turnovers are hot, but I'm just going to make the icing now so you guys can see what I'm doing to make it. Um, of course, you guys can make a different icing that you want. Preston really enjoys like brown butter frosting. So that's actually what we ended up doing yesterday for them. And I was concerned that they wouldn't look that great on the turnovers just because with my alternative butter, they have beta carotene in it, which is the coloring agent, um, which just makes it yellow. But that also means that it stays yellow when you try to brown the butter. <laughs> so it just doesn't look as great, or at least I didn't think it would. It ended up looking not that bad on the turnovers, but I'm still just going to do like a plant milk and icing sugar. Did I just Canadian that? Oh my gosh, what is it called? Oh Powdered no, sugar. powdered sugar. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. I've been living here too long, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to use plant milk and icing sugar. I Oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> powdered sugar. <laughs> you guys. Okay, and powdered sugar <laughs> for the icing. That way it's nice and white and we'll be able to drizzle that on. But we'll just drizzle it on when the turnovers are cool not when they first come out of the oven. Yeah, so I'm gonna go grab those things. I can't believe I said icing sugar two times in a row. And the second time I legitimately thought I was correcting myself. Olivia Jackson asked, do I post the recipes 
I'll be making in a live stream somewhere beforehand, like a community post or something. That way anyone who wants to bake along can be prepared. Yes. So I put it in the description, which I realize because this is the first one that's not super clear, but you can expect if I have a live stream coming up ahead, you will find the recipe in the description for that live stream. So like the thumbprint cookies, if you go and look at that, I actually already have a link to the recipe there for the original recipe if you want to make it along with me. Uh, it, it's already up and running. And so you can see in advance also what ingredients you may need to buy and just be prepared in advance. <laughs> Marion Jensen, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to as far as the deja vu. If it was me saying ice, icing sugar twice in a row, legitimately thinking I was correcting myself. Um, yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> that was really bizarre. But yeah, and then I guess... Alita Jensen, this is another point, obviously, where there's sugar. And this one is a little bit harder to get around because powdered sugar is pretty unique. But I'm sure we can I'm sure we can still find something else. Let me get the turnovers out. <laughs> Beautiful. So just a sneak peek for you guys. Those rows, you can't see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because it's upright. Well, I can't put it up that high. Well, just a second. Okay, just so you guys can kind of see here, these rows quite a bit and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see any of the layering that's going on. There's quite a bit of layering that you can see in the dough as well. I think they look beautiful. I'm just gonna set them on the stove to cool while I finish with making the icing. So the icing is honestly like a completely optional step to begin with so if you want to just like omit it that's also totally fine and I've definitely done that before and I've also had turnovers that are store-bought where essentially you could take them out halfway and sprinkle like a sugar alternative on them if you're wanting to avoid the calories from sugar you could do like a monk fruit or an erythritol sprinkle as opposed to a glaze and that totally works too, and just gives you that extra sweetness that you're looking for. Um, so, okay, Alita Jensen, a vegan caramel glaze that you're going to create perhaps. So the thumbprints, it's not actually a glaze, like it is a caramel drop essentially that goes into the middle. So it's a, probably a bit sorry goes into the middle of the cookie I should finish my sentences but that might be a little too thick for the turnovers but we'll see because I haven't made it yet so maybe that could totally be something that will work for this too I guess we'll just have to wait and see Nathaniel Jackson do you make community posts pretty frequently like the survey question things I know there was a period in time where it would be where it would really boost your channel and the algorithm? That is a, another great question. Unfortunately, I don't actually have access to community posts until I'm monetized, which means we'll need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours before I'll even have access to that feature. So unfortunately, no, and I just have to communicate with you guys through my descriptions which is pretty unfortunate and not all that convenient either. But as long as you guys are aware of that, then <laughs> we're good.
<laughs> yeah, honestly, Nathaniel Jackson, I have no idea how that is affecting the algorithm at this point. I think it's still obviously beneficial to channels when they have like a good, strong interaction with their community. But, and like that, that definitely helps if you can actually directly speak to or survey your subscribers. But unfortunately it's not something we can play with yet. This is the most basic glaze ever, but I think the white is a pretty addition to the top of a turnover, personally. Yeah. Do you guys have any last questions for me about alternative baking or Really anything else, it's totally fine if it's a random question. And I guess we can get a bit of a vote here since it's my first time instead of waiting to let them cool and have you guys like watch me do the final step of putting the glaze on which is pretty basic um i was thinking we could potentially end here since we've made all of the different items um but if you guys still have more questions i'm happy to stick on but i also don't want to waste your sunday <laughs> But I do also really appreciate you guys being here for our very first live stream. It's been really helpful to actually have an audience to interact with and feel like I'm not <laughs> doing this for no one. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah, and just to reiterate as well, um, in case you guys haven't seen the rules in the like challenge portion of the description, essentially, just to make this a little more interactive, if you guys weren't able, well, if you were making it along with me or if you were planning on making it in the upcoming week or so, you have the opportunity to upload a picture and tag our channel life.alternate on Instagram. And when you do so, I'll be notified and get to see what you made and any modifications that you made. And I'll get to vote on what I think is the best and then I'll give you a shout out at our next live stream. So if you're wanting those, those props <laughs> next time, um, you can go ahead and do that and submit your pictures on Instagram. Just make sure you tag us and I'd be happy to see those. I really am interested in seeing what you guys do with this if you choose to make it. Yeah, if you guys also have opinions on what times would be best for the live stream, if you like another day, or just another time on Sunday. Also, please let us know just real quick in the chat because we'd, yeah, <laughs> we'd like to be able to do this when it's convenient for you as well. So 
We just chose Sundays at three because it worked for us. So we're not seeing anything new in the chat. So we're just going to end this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it, especially because I was kind of nervous going into this. So it's good for you guys just to have my backs and be here. And hopefully you will enjoy these turnovers if you choose to make them. They really are delicious. So I do recommend even if you weren't able to do it with me today. At any rate, <laughs> check out our next live stream if you're interested in those thumbprint cookies I was talking about. But otherwise...